Good morning, everyone. So in today's lecture, we will be solving an example about uh, the first and the second Newton's laws that we introduced in last lecture. And we'll also introduce the inclined plane and we'll see how the, what are the cases for the inclined plane. Again, textbook sections 5.3, 5.4, 5.6. And next lecture, if you'd like to uh, prepare for next lecture, then we will be uh, introducing uh, the fraction and uh, Newton's third law. So let's start with this example. In this example, we have a girl pushes a lawnmower of mass 17.9 kilograms from rest across a horizontal lawn with by ex exerting a force of 32.9 Newton straight along the handle, which is inclined at an angle of 35.1 degrees above the horizontal, if the magnitude of the acceleration of the mower is 1.37 meter per second squared, determine the magnitudes of the normal force, the friction, we also need to calculate the final speed of the mower, if we know that the acceleration lasts for only 0.58 seconds and the magnitude of the force that the girl must then exert along the handle in order to maintain a constant speed. So let's start first by drawing the free body diagram. Yeah, so in this case, we have the the mower as a dot that has gravitational force. And we also have the handle that is F1. Now the angle here is 35.1 degrees, which is the same as this angle. So this one is 35.1 degrees as well. We have the normal force. And then we also have we have a friction that is pointing in the opposite direction of the motion. We know that the acceleration is in this direction, which means that we have the motion in the same direction of the acceleration. Now, for my coordinates, it's up to you. You, you could use the positive x in the same direction as the motion or in the opposite direction, it doesn't matter. Now, this time, I will be using it along the motion. Last lecture, we used it in the opposite direction. Now we will be using it along the motion. So let me say that this is X. And this is Y. So we need to calculate the, the normal force. The normal force on the mower, we know that the, actual, the mass is 17.9 kilograms. We have the acceleration, 1.37. Meter per second squared, and it's pointing west here. Since I put a vector, I need to define the direction of this vector. What else? I have F1. pointing 
with a, a with an angle between the between the horizontal of 35.1 and the magnitude of 32.9 so i have f1 here 32.9 newtons and then the direction is 35.1 south of west So I'm, I'm intentionally putting those references so you get used to defining the directions for vectors as well. I need first to calculate the normal force. So how do I calculate the normal force? If we look at this Mohr machine, we can see that this Mohr machine is moving in the X direction, only in the X direction. There is no motion along the Y. So in this case, if I go now to my sigma Fy equals to M. So this is the general, this is the general Newton's second law. This is Newton's second law, and that's the general expression here. In my case, I don't have a motion along the Y axis, which means the acceleration Ay here is zero, right? Then this takes me now to Newton's first law, where I have sigma Fy equals to zero. So let's look at the forces that I do have along the y-axis. I have the normal force pointing upward in the positive direction. I have the gravitational force pointing downward in the negative, and what else? So if I am to extend this one a bit, or, or this one. Then this F1 has two components. One of them is along the Y, and I will call this one F1, Y, and the second one along the positive X. And always remember that those are perpendicular. F1, X. So my F1, the force that is pushing the, the mowing machine is, as you can see, has two components, one on the X and one on the Y. So now if I am to write the sigma Fy equals to zero, what do I have? I have Fn as a positive. I have minus Fg. I have minus F1, Y, and this equals to zero, right? I need Fn, which is Fg plus F1, Y. Fn equals Fg is mg and F1y is F1 sine 35.1 degrees, right? Uh, 
So in this case, Fn equals to substitute 17.9 times 9.8 plus 32.9 times sine 35.1. Which is point five eight, and in this case, Fn equals two One ninety four Newton. Okay, any questions so far? Part B The friction force on the mower. Now, if you want to calculate the friction force, then you should be looking. at the x-axis. And in this case, we do have an acceleration along the x-axis pointing in the same direction of the positive x, right? So if I am to write Newton's second law, sigma fx equals to m ax. So let's see what are the, those forces that I have on the x-axis. I have f1x. I have minus FF equals to M. AX is pointing in the positive direction. That's why I will write it as, as positive. So AX. I need the friction. So rearranging, moving this FF to this side and MAX to the other side, I have FF equals to F1x minus M AX. FF as, what is F1x? If F1y was sine, then makes sense F1x to be cosine, right? So it is 32. 0.9 times cosine 35.1 degrees. So this one is F1x minus 17.9 times 1.37. And again, AX is positive. So FF equals two. So cosine 35.1 times 32.9, 26.92, minus 17.9, 1.37, minus 24.52, and FF equals two, Two point four Newton. So this is the friction. We found the friction knowing the acceleration. We applied the Newton's second law. We found the friction. C. If the acceleration lasts for only 0.58 seconds and then the mower moves at constant velocity, what do you think happened? 
at 0.58. At 0.58, the two forces became equal, right? And then that's why the acceleration became zero. When the acceleration became zero, I achieved constant velocity. So we need to calculate how much is that velocity at 0.58. So the acceleration only lasted for 0.58. Right at the end of this for 0 0.58 seconds, this is the velocity I achieved and this velocity is going to continue after 0.58. So in this case, and we started from rest, keep this in mind, which means the initial velocity on the x-axis was, was zero. So back now to here, if I am to redraw that very quick, I have the mower machine, I have the friction, I have the force, Fx1, I have the acceleration, and also the x-axis. So I'm starting from Vx0 equals to zero. I need to find I need to find the time. I mean, the velocity right here after 0.58 seconds, Vx. So I'm starting from zero. I have the time. I have the initial velocity. I have the acceleration. I need to calculate the final velocity. So in this case, if I go V X equals to V X naught plus A X T, then I should be able to get the, the velocity. So this one was zero. V X is 1.37 times 0.58, then the x, then the velocity. Notice that the velocity is positive because the motion is happening along the positive axis, x-axis. So 1.37 times 0.58 is 0.8 meter per second. So this is the velocity right at 0.58 second, which the velocity, the acceleration is gonna end. Now this velocity is going to continue now constant. D, the magnitude of the force that the girl must then exert along the handle in order to maintain the constant speed. So now we're back to the force. So what, what happened is the following. The girl put some force, because this force was against the friction, right? In order to move this mower machine. Then she was accelerating, and then after 0.58 seconds, she applied a force. She now has a velocity, right? She has an initial velocity, and right at that point, she applied only a force to cancel the friction. So the net force applied along the direction of motion became zero, right? In order, to in order to achieve a constant velocity, the acceleration has to be zero. If the acceleration has to be zero along this you know, path of motion, then the net force has to be zero. So now we're gonna go and do a backward solution here, we have the, again, this is the X, this is the more, this is the friction. Now we need to calculate this force 
I'm calling it F1 new. That results from F1 new X to be equal and opposite direction of the friction force. Is that clear? So if I am now to apply, and again, this angle is the same 35, what, 0.1 degrees. I need this one. I need the F1 in you. What is that force that the girl is putting along the handle that's making this more machine to be at a constant velocity? So now if I apply Newton's first law, Fx equals to zero, I will end up with the following, F1 in U, X minus FF equal to zero and F1 new X equals to FF equals to 2.4 Newton, right? We just calculated the friction. We know the friction force. Now, in order for that mower machine to move in constant velocity, the net force has to be zero. In order for the net force to be zero, then my F1 in new X has to be equal to the friction force. I found the F1 in new X. Now I need to find F1 in new. What is F1 in new? I know that F1 in new X indeed F1 new times cosine 35.1 degrees. Then F1 in new is F1 new X divided by cosine 35.1 degrees. So find cosine 35.1 inverse times F1 in new X, which is 2.4. And the answer would be F1 new is 2.93 Newton. The same direction because the handle did not move. The, the handle stayed the same. So F1 in new as a vector would be 2.93 Newton, 35.1 degrees south of west. Any question about this problem? Is that problem clear to you? Is the solution clear to you? Yes? Okay. So now let's move on to the cases of the inclined planes that we will be dealing with. And let me ask you this question based on the understanding of the calculator example that we did earlier, a few lectures ago. What happens to the motion of an object as the incline of the plane gets steeper? Do you think the acceleration of the object increases if the incline plane gets steeper or decreases or stay the same? What do you think? If the angle increases and the incline plane gets a steeper. Do you think the acceleration stays the same, increases or decreases? Will it increase? We will see why. Now, if we assume ideal plane, which means I have zero friction, and I put my object right on a planar 
flat surface, I would say. Right? What do you think is going to happen to this object? Is this object going to move through the vertical motion, through the vertical plane, through the vertical axis, I mean? No. Why? Because the normal force here is going to cancel the gravitational force of that object. And in this case, if you recall, because we have no motion, we said that the acceleration is, the acceleration along the y-axis is zero. This is one of the conditions for Newton's first law. Either the object is stationary or the object is moving in a constant velocity. Here we have an object that is stationary. But what happens if I make this plane, this plane 90 degrees, would there be any normal force? No normal force, right? And it's going to look like a free fall, right? So how much is the acceleration in this case? The negative 9.8, which is the, accelerate, the gravitational acceleration, right? Fine. Again, we're here I'm talking about an ideal plane, which means the frictions are ignored. Now, let me take this case. The last case. If the skier is sitting here, and I have the normal forces perpendicular on this inclined plane, and I have the gravitational force pointing normal this way. Again, zero friction. What do you think is going to happen to this object? Is this object going to move or stay stationary? It's going to move, right? What caused that object to move? A force. And this force is going to result into what? Into an acceleration, right? So let's see what's this acceleration. If I take my coordinates to be x, y. In this case, I can see that the gravitational force will be projected into two components. We'll have two components. One of them is in the opposite direction of the Fn. And let me call this one Fgy. And the second one along the inclined plane. FGX. So the force that caused this object to slide all the way down is the FGX, right? The FGY was opposed by the normal force. So FGX is the force that caused this object to go down. Now, what is the acceleration in this case? What is the acceleration? If we apply Newton's second law, sigma fx equals to m ax 
then sigma fx, I only have fgx equals to m max. If you substitute fgx, so if this is theta, then you extend this one like this, then this one is the complement. So the one dot here is the complement of theta. The two dots here is the is theta. So the x, the complement of theta, which means the projection is sine theta, right? So fgx here is fg sine theta equals to m ax. But what's fg? fg is m g times sine theta equals to m times ax. If you cancel M, then what do you get? AX is G sine theta. So this is the only case when you have only the gravitational force with no friction, with nothing. You can also find the acceleration by projecting the gravitational acceleration along the, the path of motion. If there are other forces, then it is not the gravitational acceleration anymore. It is the net force that causing the acceleration. Is that clear? So this is this is the special case where uh, where I have zero friction. If I have zero friction, I only have the gravitational force. I can find the acceleration along the direction of the motion here right away by projecting the acceleration, the gravitational acceleration. So as you can see here. The acceleration along the X is indeed the projection of the gravitational acceleration along on the X axis. Let's do this example. In this example, we have a sled starts from rest down a hundred meter long hill at 18 degrees to the horizontal. Assume two significant digits, neglect the friction. The sled and rider have a combined mass of 71 kilograms. What is the magnitude of the normal force? What is the acceleration down the slope? What is the sled's speed at the end of the run? So now the, this problem, if you think about it, it's an ideal, it's an ideal problem. It's an ideal case where you have zero friction. You only have the gravitational force due to the acceleration, the gravitational acceleration, right? Which is basically what we were explaining earlier. So let's solve this problem. So we have here 18 degrees. So this distance is 100 meter. And I'm starting right from here. Starting from rest, which means my VX naught is zero. I have the gravitational force. Pointing down, 71, M is 71 kilograms. I need the normal force. Uh, 
I have zero friction. So FF is zero. What is the gravitational force? So the, the first thing I, I should do is put my coordinates. And in this case, I will take my coordinates as X and Y. So if I am to find the normal force, I should apply Newton's first law along the Y axis, right? So let me see what are the projection. I will extend the Y So if I am to project the gravitational force, again, perpendicular, then this is FGY. FGX. And where is the 18 degrees? If this is 18, this is the complement. The two dots is 18, right? So two dots is equivalent to 18 degrees. Make sense, right? Okay, so I need now to apply Newton's first law, which is basically along the y-axis here to find the normal force. And I would go sigma f y equals to zero. What are those forces? I have fn pointing up in the positive direction. So fn, I have fgy minus fgy equals to zero. And in this case, Fn is Fgy or Fn equals to Mg. So we said this the, the double dot here is 18 degrees, right? And I need Fgy. So this is cosine 18. So Fn. as 71 times 9.8 times cosine 18. One fifty eight point four Newton. This is Fn. What is the acceleration down the slope? Again, we have only the gravitational force. Frictions is zero. Yes. Seventy-one kilogram. Oh, I put seventeen. Yeah, thank you. 71, 0.8, 600, yes. 61 Newton. Okay. The acceleration down the slope is the projection of the gravitational acceleration, right? So what is the gravitational acceleration here? I have G. So if I am to project it down the slope, it should be AX is G sine 18, right? Because this is the, comp this is the complement of 18. Cosine the complement is gonna give me sine 18. So AX is G 
sine 18 degrees. Now be careful, you can only use this method if you have only gravitational force. Zero frictions, no other forces. Is that clear? Only in the friction. And other forces are ignored. Okay. What is the sled speed at the end of the run? Again, here, back to uh, the motion equation, the motions that we, the kinematics that we studied at the beginning, you have an object, we have an acceleration starting from rest, from zero. You have the displacement. You need to find the velocity right at the, at the end. So here, we dx squared equals to vx now it's squared plus 2ax, x minus x naught, substitute. So this one is zero starting from the rest, vx squared equals to two times acceleration is 3.03 .03 times 100. And then vx is so two times 3.03 .03 times 100 square root 24.6. Six two meter per second. So, any questions so far about how did we solve this problem? No questions. So, in summary, keep in mind that the gravitational force. If the gravitational force is the only force that is applied on an object in an inclined plane, then the projection of this gravitational force along the direction of the motion, taking in consideration also the other forces, are the ones that are causing this object to slide on this inclined plane. Again, only when you have zero friction and all other forces are ignored, that's the only way where you can project also the acceleration on the direction of the motion and then calculating the acceleration due to the projection of the gravitational acceleration. Also keep in mind that since the object is not moving in the y direction, on that inclined plane, the AY, the acceleration along the vertical motion or vertical axis is zero. Yes. You ha we have to neglect the friction. This is the only way we can calculate the acceleration along the direction of the slope by projecting the gravitational acceleration. If the frictions are not, if the frictions are not ignored, not neglected, then you have to calculate the acceleration through Newton's second law. In this case, you would be looking at the net force. Net force, that is, that's the one that is responsible for the acceleration. But since the net force here is only the gravitational force, then the acceleration is directly calculated from the gravitational acceleration. Is that clear? Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? 
No further questions? Okay, so we have an example here. A skier of mass 65 kilograms slides down a snow covered hill inclined at 12 from the horizontal. If a friction is neglected, what are the magnitude of the normal force of the skier and the acceleration of the skier? I think this is a straightforward now based on our understanding of the acceleration. And since we only have the gravitational force that is base, basically being considered and all the other forces are ignored, only gravitational force, then the acceleration along the slope would be the projection of the gravitational acceleration. So in this case, we started, if we wanna start with the normal, so we, uh, we have here 65 kilograms, 12 degrees. This problem is not far from what we have done here. Again, let's do this very quick. 12 degrees, not to scale. The skier, normal force, gravitational force. My coordinates, I'm gonna put them right here. Then if I want to calculate the normal force, I will apply Newton's first law because I have no motion along the Y. Then in this case, I have Sigma Fy equals to zero. What do I have? I have Fn pointing up. I have minus Fg. So it's very important to define the angle correctly. Now, if you extend this Fg just for the sake of finding the triangle, then 12, the one dot here is the complement of the 12 and the two dots here is the 12. So just keep this in mind. The two dots are the 12 degrees. So in this case, if you want to get the Y component of the FG, you project it again perpendicular on the axis. Then this is the FGY. And in this case, it will be minus F G cosine 12 degrees equals to zero. And F N indeed is F G cosine 12 or F N as M G cosine 12 degrees. So we have here 65 gram, kilograms. So we have M 65 kilograms. So cosine 12 times 9.8 times 65 is 623 Newtons. And then you can calculate the acceleration along the, the slope of motion by directly projecting the gravitational acceleration, which is which in this case would be sine 12. So this is gonna be G times sine 12 degrees and AX as sine 12 times 9.8 is 2.04 meter per second square. Any question? You can also solve it by going to the Newton's second law equals max substitute you only have the gravitational force. So this one is 
FG sine 12 degrees times M AX. This one is M G times sine 12. M is going to cancel. We're going to end up with G sine 12, which is exactly the same of what we have found earlier. Any question before we end the lecture today? Okay, so we'll we'll stop here.